Hey guys, welcome back to In Depth. Here we are. We uh, are here. Yeah, uh, I am just finished up, and of course we are super excited to look at some of those replays. Yeah, we actually missed last week. Well, there was it was <laughs> like, what is there to go over? Do we do we check out like a Lima League again? Like, do we you know? Yeah. Everyone's traveling right now to the tournament. I'm amazed Let's we had enough content during that like six month break. To Dude, actually keep doing in depth. So. That was the longest break in StarCraft II's <laughs> history. It was from BlizzCon. There was only Home Story Cup to really break it up as a top tier event. But yeah, from like BlizzCon in November to this week. So that's like all of December, all of January, <coughs> basically all of February. It right? made it really hard to predict too. You know, with such a huge break. Yeah, it's really hard to like keep track on where everyone is. Yeah. But uh, here we are, and we already know the first series that we're going to look at, uh, Rogue Maru. Uh, there was some cool games in there. We decided on game two and game five, right? Uh, yes. yes. Eternal and Triton. Yes, those were the ones. Yeah. So, you know what? Let's dodge let's the blue fan start to get build. into it. That's a, that's a cool one. <coughs> All right. Uh, anyways, uh, let's, let's take a look. I'm excited. Cool. All right. <clears throat> so this this CVT was really interesting. It was really back and forth. Mm -hmm. I felt like it could have gone either way, but it ob obviously ended up going in Maru's or uh, Rogue's favor. But that last game was insane. I mean, it definitely could have gone any way. Mm. Uh, this is one of the games that Maru ended up winning, so we can take a look at that. It looked like a pretty good game. Like, w we didn't get to watch everything. Like, IM is at a really terrible time zone for Korea. Uh, so, I mean, I watched some of it. You know, I was watching the replays in the morning that we're playing, and uh, I caught the finals. Yeah. But didn't get to see these. We did poke through the replays a little bit just to check sure. which <laughs> games looked, looked reasonable. And, uh, yeah, this one seemed pretty good. Just looking at the way they are scouting and stuff, it's really interesting. I mean, like, I don't know. His first two links, so normally you build two sets of links to deal with the Reaper. These two links, like, snuck out and went all the way over here. <laughs> like, this is not something I, I've seen very often. I feel like this is a bit of a mind game-esque thing. Clearly, he knows Maru likes proxies. I mean, everybody does. But even if it was a proxy 2-rex, like, or 4, or whatever it may be, if your two links are already out and looking for it, mm. it's probably already had bunkers here, you know? Well, that would be too late. Yeah, that's what I mean. But so you have to be looking for something. I think based on what we saw in game five, that might be a little bit closer to what he's looking for. I just imagine putting a factory here, right. though. Like, <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> like, It's wild. It it's wild. wild. But we're going to see a game that looks kind of like that. <laughs> yeah. Oh. That's really nice. It's such a big deal to kill the Reaper. Mm. I mean, you lose so much momentum and so much uh, information when the Reaper dies. Like You can make the assumption that third base is being taken and that nothing really is happening, but mm -hmm. it's an assumption, which doesn't feel great. <laughs> so, pretty standard play. Actually, didn't see what happened with the Liberator. It's interesting to see Lib follow up. And he's rebuilding a Reaper. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's I love that he's rebuilding the Reaper. That's funny. This this would tell me that he's probably going to want to do like a run by because mm. you can use the Reaper to bounce uh, queens out of the way or something yeah. like that if there's a wall. Don't you feel extra silly losing it though if you're in a yes, remake? That's you like do. that's rough. But now if Rogue notices that there's a Reaper with that, don't you know? <laughs> don't you think he's like, oh, okay, you got to make your wall three queens thick or something like that? Yeah, I mean you do expect that, right? Mm. <coughs> so he does actually have some kind of coordination. I like this double evil wall here. Yeah. I do too. So the queens have pulled way out of position. I mean, all four of them over there. They don't even really deal with the um, <coughs> Liberator. Either. Yeah, the Liberator's still there. This could have gone a lot worse. And the queens are here now. <coughs> the Liberator died too. Pretty mm -hmm. good cleanup, honestly. Six drones for all those Hellions and that Reaper. Definitely not worth it. Let's take a look at Maru. It's kind of funny, too, because we've noticed that Maru is doing some more mid-game Hellbat timings. Mm -hmm. And, you know, losing all of those Hellions, obviously something like that is out of the picture now. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, double engineering bay. Yeah, the, you can see that he, he sets it up differently, though, because there's no armory at all this time. It was clearly more of a mid-game or, th like, third-base timing-esque play. Mm. Whereas the other stuff was more a two-base, really heavy timing, and then followed up. Usually you build a third with the push, 
This is like just different. Mm. Uh, both completely viable though. Just different ways of playing. Feels like he hasn't been able to really inhibit anything Rogue's been doing though. Like Rogue is basically playing his own game. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's getting his upgrades. He's got his creep spread. His double evos pumping away. He's going to get 2-2. Two, two. Lair. Uh, Bane speed. I mean everything is just really on point. Which is why it's even more interesting to, that this game goes on for you know a certain period of time where Mario ends up winning it. Generally, I would say that when the Zerg gets everything they want, mm. even that was really good for Rogue. Yeah, yeah, it seemed that way. Rogue's a little bit late here starting 2-2. Two, two. Yeah. It's kind of weird because he had his 1-1 one, one actually done before I'm wondering, Mario. Uh, is there any point in going 14 mutas? Instead of upgrades? I don't think so. I think you always get your 2-2. I think it's just a mistake. Yeah, it seems. Okay. Well, he well just that's a lot of mutas. Even All right. still, though. He doesn't have the gas anymore, but I feel like he thinks it's on the way. Uh, though he just lost every unit? What? Okay, this is really bad. This is like Zerg 101. You never, like, lose every Baneling. Mm. <laughs> like, you need something. Losing this base doesn't really matter because there's a other base over here. He keeps pushing up with Hellbats. Like, he had to rebuild these, right? Yeah, yeah. That's kind of interesting. I made that point. He really seems to like it, it uh, recently, the, the Hellbats. Yeah, they're just like a buffer. They have like mm. a lot of HP, 135 versus 35, or 55 rather. Okay, you just go across the map. I don't like how much, like he's been moving around a lot with his entire army. It's not really being spread out. Like now he's spreading it out, but mm. the fact that like Ling Bane's moving around on off creep where we knew the Terran army was, is just asking to be punished. Free Siege Shank. You know how many times I'll do that and there's like four mines underneath it? <laughs> I love that. It's the worst it's feeling ever. Trick. Well, I mean, the mutas are getting a little bit of work done at least here. His 2-2 two -two so late compared to what it could have been. Yeah, I, I have to that imagine That can't be worth mistake. the extra couple mutas. No, it, can't it definitely be. isn't. It's just a mistake. Mm. I feel like even after he built the mutas, he was expecting his 2-2 two -two to be on the way. Um... Like, what, you get three mutas <laughs> versus 2-2? Two, two. Oh, sorry, guys. Actually, this is a really weird fight. Yeah, it is a bit. It feels like Rogue's been taking a lot of fights without really thinking. Oh. oh. Like, a lot of the fights feel not very coordinated, mm. and, like, they just kind of go in and... His Ling Bane dies, and then his mutas are by themselves. How many times are these mutas going to get caught on the map? Feels like there wasn't actually that much to this game. Yeah, we like, just kind of skipped over it. Like, Maru really, like, he pushed heavily into the uh, fourth base, which was, uh, you know, to the south a little bit. And after clobbering that, he just kind of, like, attacks into the new fourth, which Rogue took. Like, I felt like it made sense that he took that as his fourth again. I feel like Rogue has been way under Bane. Like, for the amount of mines I've seen, mm. like, this is just not very many Bane links. You, you have enough gas, you can pump out 800 gas, like, like there really isn't much splash yeah. here. It's two mines and a siege tank. No, not too much. Um, yeah, never mind. I actually kind of <laughs> want to jump back to the, well, let's, let's just see the finishing blow, I guess. But I do want to jump back to the moment, because he cleared the first push on his fourth really well and then kind of lost an army. Yeah. I want to take a look at how that occurred because it felt actually like a pretty decent rogue position at that point. Like the Hellions all died very early for not a lot of damage. So you want to, I want to take a look at this because if we know what happens in the next game, this is interesting. Like this is kind of similar, a similar move to what happened in the final game, except it gets completely shut down. Look at this. Oh, that was cute. Didn't work. Well, it kind of worked actually. Yeah. That was pretty cute. Let's be real. <laughs> okay, let's jump back to the time when he was actually going after the fourth base. Because I think that that's uh, what went wrong, basically. Right? That's Because Rogue, I think we can probably agree that uh, he was ahead. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest okay, let's turning point, too, is 2-2 two -two not being started. Because then there was like a big push that with, was weird. with that Maru's was weird. Tutu, where his Maru's Tutu finished, and it was just like, where's my Tutu? Yeah, look at this, right? So he's got his 1-1 actually well ahead, which is already amazing. Like, normally his Zerg 
mm. I feel like over the years I've seen it, it's normally slightly behind, just barely behind Terran, and you're like delaying. Or even. Yeah. Like you're trying to time it up. That's what evenly. you're trying to do is yeah. get it even. Okay, so this first push that comes down at the two tanks, I'm going to pause it right here. Okay, let's take a look at what these armies actually are. So we have 38 links, 7 banes, 6 queens, and then we have these two tanks. 24 marines. Yeah. I mean, not quite, because there's some on the map, probably. And the medevacs are behind. Looks like he has a flanking force as well coming from behind. Yeah. Because right, right here, <coughs> like inside the game, it, it looks like relatively even overall. 68 workers. I, I think the worker count is a little close, mm. but... Yeah, it is a lot of SCVs in comparison, I guess. All right, so this flank, I think, is what really helps out. Look, he gets the Marines <coughs> all caught there. Even the focus fire doesn't really matter. Yeah. So that was like a beautiful cleanup. Yeah. And from there, right, that feels like this is a good position now yeah. for a rogue. This is where you drop down a creep tumor, build a bunch of drones, and get your 2-2, right? Yeah, he's got his fourth up. He's taken a fifth over here. I mean, everything looks pretty... Pretty solid. His Baneling speed's on the way. His Spire's on the way. I feel like he should immediately be going up to 80 drones. If you're not going up to 80 drones after this, you're just playing wrong, in my opinion. Well, let's see if he does, because, like, these lings were started before the battle finished, so he might have yeah. thought, like, oh, you know, maybe I need a few more units here. But even right, now, so like, you can more flank. There you go. Eight drones? Yeah, he should be going up to 80. Once he goes up to 80, then it's mm -hmm. then it's Zerg town. Zerg punishing town. Look at that creep tumor off of creep. Ever seen that? <laughs> yeah. It's a really nice play. I mean, Mara just doesn't have an army to really punish at this point. Uh, or oh. does he? Well, if you have no banelings at all and take this really terrible fight, then he does. Yeah, that is a weird fight, isn't it? Like, he's got the 1-1. One, one. Yeah, th that didn't make any sense. But I mean, like, if it's one siege tank. It's just not <laughs> scary. Like, let's say he sieges a siege tank up here, and we have 10, 15 banelings. Yeah. Bane speed finishing, by the way. Like, uh, good luck. You and, know. and the creep has actually been pushed so far out. Like, it's, you know, Mara's going to have to start further back from that fourth I base. think this is just a mistake of the game, actually. Yeah, it feels like just even that small group of lings, he's going to get so punished here. But it's like, like I said, this is where you go up to 80 drones. Look at, he's at 75. Yeah, you actually have to. Like, if you don't, you're going to fall economically behind the Terran player. Mm. Um, but if you lose your lings and you're forced to build units, and he doesn't even have any really, like... Like, this is going to be his Bane Link count now because he's lost every other Link. And he's building 14 Mutas now. 14. Oh, that's such a... Like, if he just had those Links right now and, like, bought time for the Mutas and morphed in the Banes, this base would not die at all. Yeah. I, think, I don't think you push this base with Banes. And then you have potential to have more... Yeah, but then more you have drones, 80 drones like, with, yeah. with five bases, <coughs> six... Like, you... Yeah, it's just such a huge difference. This is really not a scary army with Bane's speed and all those Lings that just died. Mm. It was almost like Rogue almost looked at that and said I could kill it with Lings. You know? Because obviously he was watching that fight and like looking at it. He brought his queens up to it. Yeah. I think he might not have been expecting so many units after he cleaned up the first push, but still. Yeah. This is a big mistake. I mean, clearly this is where the game well, truly Yeah, it turns. feels like that's where suddenly Maru is in a great position here. Because, l take a look at this. 70 SCVs of 74 drones. Terran's not supposed to be that close in workers. He's got a fourth base halfway done. I mean, this base isn't even finished. Now we're fighting, like, a small... Like, um, this is less lings than we had before, you know? Yeah. yeah, and this is not what you want to be doing anyways with your Ling Bane Muta. Yeah, you're, there's nothing even to defend over here. Like, this is pretty scary. Oh, and this is not what you want either. Yeah, this is where I was saying, like, it felt weird that he was, like, all together here. Yeah, it feels like the mutas should have made a beeline, actually, across the map. Here's another big difference. Like, if, if you if you have that Link Bane <coughs> force with three queens, and you build all those mutas, you can send the mutas across the map while Maru's actually trying to push you here. Even if this base goes down, it's like a shot, and you do some economic damage or whatever you can do mm. on the other side. But there was just nothing. Like, he just lost a base. <laughs> And has a smaller army now. Like, <laughs> you know, like that's that's the only thing that happened. Hmm. He finally, he still isn't even up to 80 drones yet. I'm no macro zerg, but 80 <laughs> drones is like the number. <laughs> that's the punishing number. Mm. All right. Well, I think we got pretty much what we can get out of this. It's kind of interesting how that that hinged on such a small... Actually, wait. I just want to yeah. look back at this I'll one more time. Sure. Like, yeah, let's just look at how many links he actually had. Look at look at how many links he actually has here, guys. Yeah, this is so many links. So I mean, pushing back this little <coughs> tiny this is push good. is smart. And now back. And then he goes up here. 
Okay, now back. <laughs> you know, I think he looks at this and he sees this many links. He's like, I can take this. The thing is, he's on attack move. Let's like he doesn't use a move command here. Like he's looking at the he fight. He uses a move command right there. And then <coughs> there's even more reinforcements <coughs> coming up, and yeah, I think this is where he realizes. I mean, like he he's looking at this and still not moving back. Like he, you know, like this is just such a slow mm. move back. I feel like yeah. he thought he was more committed than he was. That too. was a wings of liberty move back. Yeah, for All when right. we haven't, we didn't actually uh, <laughs> calculate as quickly how the wings were going to do in a battle. I think he just looked at it and just felt like his wings were going to do better. Never overestimate links. Okay. <laughs> All right, so, so a little bit interesting there. We're going to jump to right for Rogue this game, you know? And I actually... Well, this is the same unit comp, too. He goes yeah. Bane Mute in the next game we're going to look at. We're going to look at game five on Triton now between Maru and Rogue. Okay, let's see what we got. There's nothing really to talk about. Let's time Zade it. Yeah. Hatch first. <laughs> One thing that was kind of interesting that we both talked about was there's no proxies at all this series, I believe. Um, er, uh, I mean, like, Braxos, sorry. Uh, whatever that factory thing was. But I don't think there are single proxy racks. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. <coughs> yeah, there was just the one proxy factory on a Zen, I think. Yeah, that was just weird. Yeah. I've never seen that. It actually looked really strong, but got scouted. So far, I already like... Uh, Maru's positioned this game more than the last game. Like, the Reaper died. Yeah, it is true. Well, I, I want to pay attention as well as what he's going to do with the Hellions. Because let's not forget what happened to those Hellions previously, too. Like, what he threw them all away, kind of. Like, he yeah. used a Liberator and the Hellions. He got six drones and, like, Lings. I wonder... He didn't get a Tech Lab last time because I think he was building the Reaper. I wonder if he builds a Tech Lab because the Reaper stayed alive this time. Mm. Or if it's just a build order choice. That's a kind of interesting thought because it kind of shows like if my Reaper dies, I have this. This is my build, you know? Rather than like I'm playing this build on this map on this game, you know? Mm. I think that's a really interesting way pro players think. Where like if something bad happens, I have this. Which is not not necessarily steps that Wait, very many pro like gamers take. My Reaper died, so I'm going to go Liberator and rebuild it. And I'm going to do the Hellion Reaper push with the Reaper jump or bounce. Maybe he doesn't think I'll have a Reaper because it died. Mm. You know, like if these are options. Instead of building yeah. a tech lab, not having a Reaper, going into just Hellbat or Hellion or whatever <coughs> without the Reaper, you can't push him out of the way. Mm. Drones don't die. It's a pretty big difference. Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, it doesn't really work out that game. Like he didn't actually utilize mm. the Reaper. But you don't know that. I mean, he well, yeah, it could have been a wall where he bounces absolutely. the Queens out and 12 drones die and the game's over. You've definitely seen games where people have lost because of that. All right, so hold on. Let's can you take a look at Maru real quick, because this is a big difference uh, with his Hellions, how he's using them this game. Mm -hmm. Like, jump down towards this third right there, okay? Because he just kind of dived in before here. He's only poking edges, right? And the thing is, it's a very different map, and especially at the walls. If you look at the other game, Rogue obviously had the two Evo Chamber wall on the primary ramp going up towards the natural and third. Right. So there was only one way in. So it was like, well, if you're going to go, you're going to go. I Here mean, he's kind of poked both locations, and it's almost better for him, right? Because he's not throwing those away right now. He also didn't open Lib, because I think there are a lot of that momentum yeah, was that's with the true. Liberator. Yeah, yeah. Um, but clearly this build is just different. Really mm. interesting, actually. These pushes, like, never work. <laughs> like, never. Like, there's no medevac. Uh... I really just don't ever see these pushes work. I can kill these pushes with Zergling sometimes. Mm. Like, it just does Because you build so many queens, especially if you're not 100% sure what's going on because of BCs or whatever. And if you scout Cloak, Banshee, you're building so many queens. Like, mm. it just, it's just normal. And without the medevac, you just don't have, like, unit retention. Like, your units just yeah. lose HP and die. Yeah. The only thing that's going for him here is there's no detection. Like, I just, like, I didn't even watch this game, and I knew this push wasn't going to do much. So it's really interesting that Ro or Maru decided to go for it. Well, is he just using this to make sure that you're not overdroning? Kind of, but at the same time, Rogue didn't, like, he didn't actually even need these links, really. He probably could have built half. 
yeah and held this and then it, then what do you have i could i could be going spire with a fourth mm. base and 80 drones and what do you have to counter what do you got you got combat shield on the way well, he's got he really has nothing other than the fact that he has three cc that's what i mean like you lose so much momentum if it yeah. doesn't do anything and it, it doesn't it's just designed not to do anything it's like designed to I, not I do anything. i kid you not Jake you're Lampabee, you are building two, these queens to defend the cloak banshee you scouted and your hellbats are bad against them. I know, yeah. No, it's it's very true. I, I can't tell you how many failed hellbat pushes that I've seen in my time. Like, I didn't even watch and this it's game. Not a, it it's not a work. hellbat all-in, which is definitely very different. The hellbat all-in is like what bad Terrans do to good Zergs. Uh, and that never works as well. <laughs> I mean, but it never works. Yeah, we've been dealing with this for f yeah. four or five years or yeah, whatever. It's, it's been, been a long time since Innovation dropped these out of Medivacs into lo lines, you know. Those were good times because you could drop four of them back then. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the, uh, it just doesn't yeah, feel like great. Reducing the queen count, the, is that really valuable Not here? really because you've lost your, like, the thing that's good against queens are, you, like, your harass is Banshees, and it's not really there anymore. So... <laughs> I don't know. It just doesn't feel great. I don't know when that was going to... Like, what would that kill? Think about it. Like, it wasn't, it what wasn't it very kill? impactful. So clearly, I mean, it's not, it's not as committed as I'm making it out to be. But at the same time, <laughs> if you're just going to trade your momentum for a couple queens, mm. I, don't, I don't think it's very good. <coughs> what is he doing right now? What are you doing, Mara? Ready to raise some hell. Okay. So, interesting he takes this base first. I really don't get that. <laughs> well, let's take a look. Hold on. Why oh, would he take I that? I guess creep. Like, he already had creep going up there. Like, you do have, they, they have to walk up a ramp to attack it. So, I mean, I guess there's something to that. I guess. It's not very uh, common you get attacked on this pathway, I guess. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not <coughs> sure. I mean, I guess you're not taking this base over here. So, it's <laughs> either this one or this one. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's taking both. I like the... <coughs> I'm sorry. What do you think about the number of Hellions he's actually producing this game? He really seems to like Hellbats. I find it really interesting. I mean, I made this comment because I don't <laughs> see it very often. Mm -hmm. And, like, he, his factory's actually just been reactive the whole game. Normally, you swap this out. Yeah. Basically, he's, going, he's doing this instead of Siege Tanks. And they kind of accomplish the same thing. If you think of it, you had a Siege Tank here, except the one thing is it's more mobile. Like, you can actually retreat with it, I guess, if you have enough medevacs. Yeah. But, uh, like, say you have a tank and you're able to click on one of these veins and kill them. It's kind of the same as having five Hellbats, like, in a line here. Like, they're going to so soak up enough. Yeah, and it can't be, like, a something where he's trying to save his gas for other stuff. It doesn't look like it's anything like that. It's just so. like a reactor factory. The only thing mm. is that you can't use this for Marines or whatever you want. It's interesting. I really... Well, it adds a, a little bit of technicality to the, the army here, I guess. I like. I mean, I don't hate it. It's really interesting. It's it's a uh, like a new flair of I'm like just, I'm aggression. Trying to, I'm trying to figure out how these two pieces fit together for Maru. Right, the initial Hellbat push with the Banshee, which really didn't do much. <laughs> I guess he's reducing the queen count slightly. He's making sure that you're not over droning at least with that. Right, mm -hmm. and that's that is an important thing. If they're already at 80 drones at that point, the game is never going to be won. But. Uh, but then, like, to continually make Hellions and move out again with your Marines at this point? It also it's just feels so like different. the unit retention wasn't there. Like, these, if these units were together, like the original Hellbats and the original Banshees, maybe? But you're never going to save those, you know? Hmm. All right, so what I was talking about before is, like, they kind of have the same job for zoning and, like, buffering. Mm -hmm. Except it feels like you can use them more mo mobile. Like, they're just more mobile. Which I kind of like, because tanks actually kind of really inhibit your ability to move forward and yeah. backward. If you move too far back, they die. If you move too far forward, they don't help you. Mm. And if you're unseaging, you're, you're just potentially losing everything. Like, yeah. So I kind of like it in an aggressive stance. But the only thing is I think siege tanks have more longevity. Where if you can keep them and keep them and build up the number, they're way scarier. Well, I like feel if like it's five or six siege tanks, yeah. oof, good luck fighting that. It seems, though, that you know Hellbats don't scale. At yeah. all. Yeah. Like, they just, as you get later into the game, they don't become better. They don't even keep up with what their supply cost is. True. So, it feels to me, and especially the way I'm seeing Maru use these, I don't think he's even trying to keep them alive. No. Like, obviously, you're not trying to lose them, but it's, it's like, these. he knows these are not coming home. 
Right. He just wants to trade them as well as he possibly can. They're almost like this interesting mineral sink that he's using where, he, like, yeah, maybe it is that mobility. Maybe Like, he did he did get rid of that hatchery. I like the, like the follow-up is really smooth, too, because there's not a tech lab on your factory from before. <coughs> mm. Like, you can just start pumping mines on one of them immediately, mm -hmm. which is quite nice. The only thing is that you're playing Siege Tankless, essentially. Well, against Slingbane Muta, you probably don't want the Siege Tanks too much anyways. I don't like them against that that comp. Definitely prefer the mines. One side note, uh, once Hellbats fight against Bane speed, you can actually just walk by the Bane or the Hellbats and they yeah. become completely irrelevant. So, And you see, he just leaves him. Like, he picks up his Marines and gets out, and there you go. That was the Hellbats for this game. The only thing is that this game feels very comparable to last game. If you look at the supplies, the only thing is that the SCV count is way lower than it was against... Uh, 56-72. Like, we were like five SCVs behind basically the whole game. This is a much bigger gap. Mm. Um, upgrades are way faster for Rogue. Rogue has this basic army before he goes Muta's. It's not yeah. Muta's in, into a basic army. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just feels like Rogue skipped steps for no real reason in my opinion. Like he just skipped the basic army, went straight to Muta's, and then got killed. Instead of going the other way around where you've got like your Ling Ball, yeah. you morph in Banes, and then you go into Muta's. Well, this like is the more classic way to play right here. Yeah, like it, just, this is it just didn't, I didn't understand why. Like what was the point mm -hmm. of skipping the, the basic army first? Because it felt like he was playing from behind the whole time after that. Yeah, it certainly did. After like throwing away all those links too. It just didn't make any mm -hmm. sense. I wonder if he threw away the links and he just like, you know, I can't win from this perspective. Like I need to go Muta's mm. to try and catch him or something. I don't know. Like when you know the base is going to go down. Makes sense. So Rogue's position this game is way better. The <coughs> only thing is the supplies are qui quite close. I felt like M Maru's build this game felt a lot worse. Like it did uh, kind of accomplish something. It killed this base, but just doesn't feel okay, the same. Okay, hold on. We got to look at this because this is such a bizarre situation where our 2-2 two -two is starting as the Zerg 2-2 two -two is finishing. Mm-hmm. That's not something that you see that often. Like, it, it feels terrible, right? <laughs> and I'm trying to think. Uh, it Because obviously he opened a little bit tech-heavy. He went for the Cloaked Banshees. He's made lots and lots and lots of Hellions, more Hellions than we basically ever see for Hellbats. Right. <clears throat> so I wonder, like, the, the way that he's doing this, it feels like it's this nonstop pressure while building his economy and maybe the upgrades are the part of the build that gets cut so yeah. that he can keep that pressure up. Because if you keep your opponent uh, on their back foot and you're, like, eliminating a hatchery here, you're killing drones there, you're forcing lots of lings to be made, then it could pay off. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, he is on three base economy, right? He he basically hasn't stopped attacking. It's just these upgrades are so slow. I feel like the creep is supposed to be way worse, too, with this build. Mm. Like, we're just so active on the map that this should not exist. I don't even know how this is happening. Like, you know, like we're fighting on creep up a ramp. <laughs> it does feel like we've cut a lot of really essential things though in Z V T. Like mm -hmm. the upgrades count is not where it should be. There's no fourth. Um it's it's interesting. I really don't understand the build that much. I feel like my brain is just too small to comprehend, but at the same time it doesn't make sense. The thing is uh, well if you if you had to guess, where would you put it at? Like what what would you because I already kind of said what I'm kind of thinking that this looks like to me. Which I think is what this was supposed to be was yeah. the Hellbats were supposed to do more, like maybe kill some drones, all the queens, whatever. Mm. And then we're, we're playing from an advantage the whole time where we just keep railing him with push after push yeah. after push after push yeah. Yeah. while he's just trying to get back to where he was. He's just trying to build his queens, his economy, mm -hmm. all that stuff. But the first push just died. So now he's just like hitting into like a big Ling Bane army and that doesn't work and then he hits again mm. and now it's you know like it's just not great like the supplies are actually pretty even so if you think about it if that push had gone better for Maru it would have kept scaling in Maru's favor push after push after push yeah no that's that is a very good point uh and the thing is Hellbats are kind of a funny unit too mm -hmm. where when you get to certain numbers of them they don't get any better yeah like if you have 10 Hellbats <laughs> and you're fighting against Zerg or you have 15 Hellbats and you're fighting against Zerg, it, I don't feel like that changes very much, you know, because yeah. they can't all fire at the same time. And they so it's not like you're getting a higher DPS or anything. Yeah, and they're going to be more clumped for Baneling hits. Yeah. So that's kind of an interesting part of this build as well, and that might be why he had to do that initial attack, because if he's planning on making Hellbats nonstop, it's not like you want 
that many with your army. It might be better to just kind of trade them out. You're not going to have to make as many depots or something. Like, they aren't going to get better if he pulls those home and then attacks with 15 Hellbats in the next attack. Right. Yeah, that also makes sense why you can sacrifice 2-2 two -two because your opponent shouldn't have such a fast 2-2, two -two, you know? Yeah. Like, that's something the Zerg players do kind of try to skip out on if you don't have the economy or whatever. Like, you're not going to prioritize 2-2 two -two and a bunch of stuff and then have 20 drones or 30 sure. drones or whatever it is. So it's interesting. I think the synergy of the build, you need to do something with it. But the push just doesn't feel like it's supposed to do anything, you know? Well, at this point, it, it's, uh, I don't know, playing with 1-1 one, one Marines against this all this Ling Bane <laughs> does not feel good. Yeah. I really don't like this base, by the way. Just looking at it, it's like, imagine if there were tanks and we're just, like, tanking up and marining here and just being annoying like good luck you're coming down a ramp mm. there's a ramp over here like what are you gonna do flank from two ramps like hmm if he went tank though would he have been able to kill this base that he got Probably with the hell not, that push no. I'm so just saying against a standard yeah I just wonder about that that could be part of it as well this push uh, this attack felt crazy I actually thought that the game was over when I was watching this at home. Yeah, that was a money point. wheel mine right there. But Rogue, I mean, Rogue, I mean, five banes is really not enough. I think if Maru was a bit greedier, he probably would have won the game. And by greedy, I mean, like, just stimming down and coming, you know? like. <laughs> but that's a noob thing to do. I like the safe. It should have scanned and killed this. And Like, right now, it's three base versus three. Fourth base is on the way. Two two's coming. No 3-3 three, three on the way. No hive, like nothing, you know? There's nothing mm. really on the way for, for Rogue. It just feels like Maru took the lead. The only thing is the worker count is still not even the same as um, the, th the other game, which is weird to me. 76, 58. Hmm. It just, yeah, it feels like this entire game plan is just way low, lower econ. Like, if you think about it, the fourth base was landing the other game. Similar army compositions, right? I mean, there were siege yeah, tanks. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. There's no fourth on the way at all. No, there's not. Which is just strange to me. Yeah, it's definitely a very different strategy. It just feels worse to me. Because we're not really utilizing what makes us Maru. You gotta utilize your assets. Well, I guess he's he is utilizing like his micro and his kind of a... Yeah, he's just he's playing very aggression. He's uh, just micro less units. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, he could be microing a maxed Maru army, or he could be microing just like mm. a, a s like a lower econ. Like Zerg just doesn't care. They're gonna throw units at you all day if they have a bigger economy. Um, oh, this is cute, but it didn't didn't really flower, as we call it. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> that was yeah. a good idea. Nice pick off. Really love when you have this mute account. By the way, this is like the really annoying mute account where they can one-shot mines, one-shot medevacs, one-shot anything that's just out of place. So what is going on? Like, what are we doing while this muta thing is happening as Rogue? Well, yeah. I mean, we're just kind of doing is everything. Is this even good for Maru? It's like, yeah, you have the mutas trapped, kind of, but you're not keeping any sort of pressure on Obviously, them. if you killed them all, sure. But if your ar entire army is dedicated to keeping these mutas in one spot, while the Zerg just expands everywhere and builds up their ground army, it's definitely not worth it. Hmm. I mean, we're not quite at that 80 drone level, but we're getting there. This is pretty surprising to me. It feels like this is the kind of play where, like, you know you have a warp prism here, and they have, like, 20 gates. Yeah. And then you're just like, you know what? I don't care anymore. And you just leave. <laughs> and then they warp in, like, 20, 20 zealots and kill you. Like, mm. it feels really, like, th there's no turret. Like that is funny. You didn't even make. If a the muters just flew into the main right now, you would just be really sad. But well, honestly, this might be the best timing Maru possibly has this game. Right? He's maxing out. He knows that the mutas are out of position right now. Yeah, but the the problem is a lot of your momentum is going to be clearing creep or taking bad fights. Mm. Whenever you do this, like, and we actually see it because this is what happens. You 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 have to clear creep before you fight. You're not just going to run up this and. And YOLO in because <laughs> you're going to die. <laughs> Hopefully not. So, like, you got to position your army. you got to split it up. It, it just takes so much longer. And if the mutas are just, like, poking at you while you do this, mm. like, Rogue never has to fight until it's, like, in your face, like, up here. Where do you even attack here yeah. right now? You don't. So Hold it on. Do you even need to attack right Well, I guess you're maxed out, so you should be pushing. 
But I think taking your time in this scenario is okay as Maru. In yeah. fact, I yeah. feel like... Maru should have a fourth base planetary yeah. right now. Yes. Fully mining. Yes. Maru should have a fifth base. This should be the fifth base. Maru should not have 11 out of 6 workers on his main, 15 out of 13 here, no mining fourth base, mm. and this having to be the push, you know? Because this makes you... When you don't have a really big economy following your army, your army is so much more important to you, and you're going to be so much more, like, time-focused. I need to do something. I need to use my units better here. Like, it's just not the same with whether... I, if I have, like, an 80 SV economy where it's like, oh, I took an even fight, that's fine. Mm-hmm. That's not the same case here. If we take an even fight here, we're in trouble. Yeah. yeah. Like, that can't, you can't play Terran that way. It, you really can't. Hmm. Because it's hard to take an even fight against this army. This army is just like the replenish master. Like, I replenish this army all day. Yeah. And also, Maru's doing the <coughs> thing I said we, we wouldn't do. But it makes sense, I guess. Because... No, I don't know. I feel, like, I feel like here. you have to push a little bit slowly here. Yeah. I mean, I even I though agree it doesn't, you, it doesn't feel super good to let him continually mine here. Oh, I actually like that from our. It's okay. This not so much. Oh. Like this is the problem, right? We're bleeding units everywhere, mm. and the mobility of the Zerg is just like I can come to your base anytime I want, and morph enough bane links that it's annoying for you to attack me. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, and there's just no planetary. Like, th there should be a planetary somewhere. <coughs> I feel like he was just shoeholded into, like, this bad economy based off of his build. He doesn't even have these gases yet. Like, what's going on? Well, he definitely does not need gas at the moment. <laughs> I know, but I'm just saying, like, he wasn't he wasn't focused on, like, super late mm. game. Yeah, it seems like everything has fallen apart at this point. I, like, if I had, like, five Banes here, I'd think about taking that fight, you know? Like, mm. there's no Banelings with this army, obviously, but this is so many mutas. And Maru's turned around, so now we're just in a really bad spot where we don't have an economy, we don't have a fourth base, we don't have a fifth base over here. We're going to probably float our main. We have 3-3, three, three, though. Something, like, I guess. It just feels like if we had the fifth or the fourth and 3-3 three, three on the way, man, what I love Maru's position still, like even now. If this is like 70 SCVs versus 80, 3-3, three, three, planetaries here, we're, we're rebuilding this base or we're lifting our main. Still so much of it seems to come down to those two Hellbat attacks. Yeah. The second one did a good job. We it have did. to give the second one its props, right? But it didn't do enough. Because the Zerg player wasn't really stifled. I mean, he had 2-2. Mm. Two two, still took this other base, this base here. Creep was still on the map. I mean, yeah. He still got all his mutas out. It just felt like Maru was expecting to railroad Rogue into submission with this one. Yeah. If you compare this to the, the game Maru won, if Maru had the economy of that game, I think Maru wins. Well, you know, that is... I, the thing is, it is a different strategy overall. I do feel like there's uh, some overlap where it's like, okay, this guy really likes Hellbats right now. Uh, he's, he's trying to just continually pressure, which is, I mean, that's a pretty normal thing anyways. Like, okay, so even now, 43 SCVs, <laughs> we're mining on three command centers. Well, three he's about like to if have we a hit a 3-3 three, three. with a max, I still like his position. He just needs to do it methodically and, like, do it really well, you know? Like, a maxed 3-3 three, three Terran army with upgrade advantage. Also, by the way, 40 SCVs dead. Or 40, 40 SCVs to 80. Nine mines, seven marauder, nine medevac, two thor. Yeah, I mean, three, Like, that's three, a pretty yeah. scary that's army pretty if good. it's actually pretty good. planned out well. But the problem is Rogue is never going to let you do that because Rogue is going to counterattack. And you're going to either go for the throat or just sit there and like not mm. do anything for a really long time. And look, look at this. It's kind of like playing um, a Protoss where you just refuse to fight and you're always going to go for the counter. Mm. Like, does he even care? I just watched 30 Banelings run into a Thor. <laughs> yeah. And if Maru's Marines were just further back a little bit, Yeah. Yeah, I just don't like it because of the ability to replenish this Bling Bane army so quickly. Mm. This is why if you get to the 80 drone mark, it's just so scary for the turn. Well, look at the counterattacks going on right now, right? Oh, yeah. Ridiculous. He's actually killing three bases at once while Mario kills one. 
Yeah. And Maru can never k do what he's doing, by the way. Mm. Like, let's imagine there's, like, a double drop Metavax over here. Is that going to do anything? Do you, do you like, no. It's literally not. There's a spine crawler. We'll probably have six, eight, six to eight Banes over here. You're not going to be microing two, two splats at once. All the Banes are going to crash on this, and then I only have to focus on this again. Mm. Whereas I can A-move Lings. If these Lings die, do I actually care? No. Not at all. Like... It's just so much harder to have like an appropriate amount of Marines to mm. deal with this yeah. in each base, too. And also do a push. Well, planetary fourth base is planetary fourth base for a reason, you know? Yes. I mean, planetaries are essential. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, 11 drones died in the time 41 SCVs died, which is, you know, well, 99% that was an abnormally, of the economy. Uh, an abnormally strong uh, counterattack from Rogue, but... Yeah, it was. Let's just look at the push one more quick time. The first push. Okay. I do want to say Rogue was really, really good at, like, seeing what was coming at him and, like, moving the spores and just being ready for it. Mm. But it just doesn't feel scary to me. <laughs> like, Well, I love his split there. Like, the two Ling, the, the group of Lings in the back surrounded the Hellbats that were not in a great position. Yeah. He moved the spore out, burrowed it. Then the Lings come look in and him. kind of buffer a bit. He's, <laughs> like, does Rogue look like he cares? He's putting drones on gases, mm. you know? Like, if he was actually scared, trust me, he would not be putting drones on gases. Yeah, that's for sure. Like, that is the last thing the Zerg player is doing. <laughs> yeah, like, if I just held this and I'm, I'm not even Rogue, I'm no regret. I'm feeling good, you know? <laughs> I'm feeling good. Yeah. Like my spire on the way, link Well, certainly, especially with that one one finishing up, so you know their upgrades are going to be a bit slower. Yeah, I just feel great. What's what's going on with the engineering base? So, plus two is insanely fast, mm. by the way. Like it's six minutes, and plus two armor is already started. This is another thing. If you don't hit like a push in in the timing where the upgrades are coming, there's really nothing that scares me off of my upgrades for rogue. Like you're always going to start these automatically. Mm. Like there's just nothing coming at you, so why do you, why wouldn't you? Yeah, it was good. It was good from Rogue. Like I, I, it really feels like a big misplay on Mar map two that we looked at. Yeah, you know from yeah. Rogue. I agree. Whereas, like Maru lost this game, and obviously it's not like his absolute best game he's ever played or anything like that. But it doesn't feel like as much of a misplay as what we saw from Rogue in the game that Maru won. Yeah. I agree. I mean, Rogue, Rogue really misplayed. Like, no 2-2. Two, two, he lost all his lings. Yeah. His mutas got caught multiple times. Uh, though Maru played a lot better. Like, his economy was way up, way better on point. His upgrades were way better. I mean, at this point in the last game, there was only, like, a 5 SCV difference. Um, mm. It just feels like... It's interesting, because I think the synergy was just off with Maru's build based off of the initial attack, which felt like it wasn't supposed to do much, in my opinion. Mm. Especially against a player like Rogue. This is, like, okay against the average ladder Zerg, but, you know. Yeah. Interesting. Oh. Yeah. Good results. Good good series overall, I would say. Uh, so that was uh, Maru vs. Rogue. Yeah, it was. I'm, I'm kind of surprised that Maru made it this far into the tournament playing like this, because it doesn't feel like peak Maru, if you know what I mean by that. Well, I haven't gotten to see all of his games yet. Like, this replay pack is something I'm going to be spending a lot of time <laughs> in the next couple of weeks looking at mm. uh, to uncover that, especially with the uh, Super Tournament coming up and everything. But, yeah, uh, I mean, he must have played very well to get top four overall. In this particular game, it was kind of a wonky Hellbat-based strat. I, I just never like Hellbat openers too much, but he's... In a lot of these games, he's used them more than we're used to. Yeah. In more macro situations as well. It's very true. So maybe this is like an evolving thing. I like his I like his use of Hellbats instead of Siege Shanks in these positions. Mm. And it synergizes well with his follow-up of, like, mines. I'm wondering if this is good against Rogue specifically. Because it feels like if you were doing this against a Roach player, you'd be Yeah, trouble. against Dark, you might not want to do this yeah. strategy. Because it's better than a coin flip that he's going to have roaches when you get there. <laughs> yeah. And you're just like, well, I've got mines yeah. after my hell battle in. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, really interesting. I, yeah. I think it could have gone either way, but like there were some really scary points with that, with those mine hits and stuff, but mm. yeah, interesting series. Cool. 
Yeah. All right. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. You can follow us on Twitch and YouTube and everywhere we are. Pretty sure it's all Artosis, right? Twitch.tv yeah. slash Artosis, YouTube.com slash Artosis. Um, TV. Artosis TV. Yeah. And on Patreon at In-Depth SE2. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys later.